And we know that the attributes of Allah are nothing like the attributes of humans. So the human's bashfulness is based on fear, intimidation, shyness, weakness of the heart, not wanting people to talk or tarnish your reputation. With Allah Azza wa Jal, it is unlike that because all Allah's attributes are nothing similar to the attributes of others. So Allah's bashfulness and modesty is based on strength, on power, on generosity, on His majesty. He's not weak to feel bashful, Azza wa Jal. Rather, He is powerful and He owns everything. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jal bashfulness is not like ours. Allah's modesty is not like ours. Allah is so bashful and modest that He does not expose His servant when He makes sins. Though Allah, He prohibited it upon Him, yet Allah does not expose Him. Not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal is bashful. When you, you sinner, when you, you disobedient, raise your hands to Allah. Though you know that Allah knows that you're sinful and disobedient, when you raise your hands and ask Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah is so bashful that He answers your dua and your invocation. Even if you're a kafir, even if you're a disbeliever, He would not reject you. He would answer your dua and He would answer your prayer because he's bashful, he's generous, he's the almighty and he loves those whom are bashful as well. So when you're bashful, not to face oppressors in their face or people with no gratitude to what you've done to them, you're so bashful not to face them and tell them that I've done this to you and I've done that to you. Rather you call it a day and not respond to them. Allah loves this from you. When you forgive due to your bashfulness, Allah loves that from you. So this throws in our hearts the love for this bashful God, Allah the Almighty, who is so generous, so majestic, so kind, so wealthy that he no never returns us empty handed. As for the sitir, the one who conceals people's faults and mistakes, the Arabs have a tendency whenever they see a, an accident or something problematic, they would say, Ya satir or Ya sattar, and both are not of Allah's names. The authentic name of Allah is As-Sitir, as mentioned in the Hadith. And look around you. We're all sinful. How many of us have been exposed to the public? No one knows the sins that I do in secret. Yet Allah keeps on putting His shade on me, covering me, from people's eyes and not exposing me so that I may repent and ask him for forgiveness. And this is why Allah loves those who are bashful and who conceal other folks' sins. And Allah says, and, 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 and the Prophet says, والسلام, whoever conceals a believer in this dunya, Allah will conceal him on the hereafter. Allah will not expose you in front of everybody else. And this brings us to those who master the art of tarnishing people's reputation. Those who keep on coming and popping. Uh, what do you say about uh, so-and-so? What about scholar so-and-so, sheikh so-and-so? Some say he's deviant, some say he's ikhwani, some say he's this. They just want to expose people whether rightly or wrongly, they don't care. 
Because when you expose people and show others their flaws and shortcomings, who remains without flaws or shortcomings? Me. So I expose him and her and those and these so that at the end of the day, I'm the only one who has no flaws or shortcomings. Be careful. Wallahi, those who try their best to expose people's sins, Allah would expose them in the midst of their own homes. With all doors and sh shutters closed, Allah would expose them. And this is what the Prophet warned from alayhi as wassalam. This is why the most heinous sin is the one you boast about. Allah conceals your sin that you've done last night. Morning time, you go and call your friends. Didn't you know yesterday I managed to hook up with this beautiful girl or I watched this movie or I gambled in a casino and I won this and much. So he exposes what Allah has concealed. This person, Allah would never forgive his sins as per the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The third and fourth names we have today is Ash-Shakir wa shakur Shakir is the appreciative and Shakur is the one most ready to appreciate and they're very, very close in meaning. And they all come from a shukr gratitude, to be thankful. Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا What would Allah do with your punishment? What will Allah gain from punishing you if you are grateful and believe and ever is Allah appreciative? وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا This is the name, Shakir. So what does Shakir and Shakur mean? Shakir and Shakur means that Allah Azza wa Jal, with His might, with His glory, He expresses His gratitude to those who do their deeds sincerely for His sake. So He thanks them and He forgives their many, many faults and sins and He would never ever neglect the good deed you had done, rather he would multiply it to many, many folds without account. Part of Allah's being appreciative is that he rewards for one good deed 10 times. And these 10 times up to 700 folds. And Allah multiplies to whomever he wills much more than that. Part of Allah Azza wa Jal's being appreciative being Shakur and Shakir is that when you do good deeds, not necessarily he will postpone rewarding you for it on the Day of Judgment. Rather, we see it here. Sometimes you give in charity $10 and without noticing before that day ends, you get a thousand from means you did not anticipate. You never know how Allah Azza wa Jal appreciates what you do of the good deeds. And if you're sincere, Allah will multiply. The funny thing is that we are unable to do good deeds without His support. So He facilitates for us to do good deeds. He provides us with, with provisions, with means, so that we can do these good deeds. Then. He praises us and He compliments us for doing good deeds. And He expands our chests, fills our hearts with light and Iman, gives our bodies strength and agility, blesses all of our affairs with things that He had given us initially. Yet He's appreciative for us doing what He ordered us to do. Part of Allah being appreciative is that when you ever leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah Azza wa would replace you with something that is better. A brother called me yesterday asking me about 
presenting a forged document in an interview showing that he has a buffed experience of five years where actually he does not have except one. And I told him, whenever you leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah would grant you provision from means you did not anticipate. All what you have to do is believe. Believe that Allah is a provider and never lie, never cheat, and he will take good care of you. Part of Allah being appreciative, if you come to Allah Azza wa Jal, a bit, he comes to you all the way. If you show Allah that you want to get closer, Allah would facilitate that for you and he would reward you folds and folds. The fifth name is mentioned in the Quran and it was mentioned 14 times. And this name by itself needs lectures, not one, lectures. Because this is the art of living under the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says, Allahu khaliqu kulli shay'in wa huwa ala kulli shay'in wakil. Wakil. What does wakil means? It is the trustworthy disposer of affairs. Allah is the creator of all things and he is over all things, disposer of affairs. What do we mean by wakil? In Arabic, if I hire someone or appoint someone as my wakil, then I have given him uh, the power of attorney. I've authorized him to act on my behalf. So if I want him to be my wakil, my agent, my representative, the, the one given power of attorney, then in marrying my daughter to XYZ, he takes care and he looks into it and he facilitates things. If he's my agent or my wakil responsible of leasing a house or buying a car, he does whatever I need to do. So when a person takes Allah Azza wa Jal as his wakil, means that he surrenders his powers and authority to Allah's powers and authority. And he trusts Allah Azza wa Jal. And he depends and relies only on Allah to facilitate his affairs. This is known as tawakkul. And this requires lectures without end. Because the essence of Islam depends on tawakkul. Allah Azza wa Jal is the wakil whom we authorize, whom we beg rather than authorize to grant us provisions, food, the life of our hearts, the air, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, everything is in his hands and he is our wakil. He's the one whom we depend upon, rely and trust. And this is why he suffices us and he pleases us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the only one that you can depend upon because he never dies. And listen to this beautiful verse. Allah says, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ You cannot depend on anyone except him. Why? And rely upon the ever living who does not die. If I depend on someone who dies, what happens when he dies? I'm lost. I'm beaten. I'm overcome by all others, but when I depend on the Hay, who never dies, when I rely and, 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 and trust him, then I am a winner without any doubt. The following two names usually come together. It is Al-Qabid, Al-Basit. Al-Qabid is the withholder. Al-Basit is the grantor of ample provision. And these names, as we've mentioned before, are usually combined when mentioned. So we don't mention one without the other, usually. Especially in the Qabid. Why? Because it may make people think that Allah withholds. 
And withholding is not something that is positive without the other side of it, which is the grantor of ample provision. So they, used to, you, they have to be used together, generally speaking. Allah says in the Quran, وَاللَّهُ يَقْبِضُ وَيَبْسُطُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And it is Allah who withholds and grants abundance. And in the authentic hadith, and this is where we get these two names of Allah from the authentic hadith. Anas said that prices went up at the time of the Prophet ﷺ in the market. So the people went to the Prophet ﷺ complaining and asking him to set a limit for the prices. So the wheat, the barley, the dates, everything went up. And we know that prices depend and rely on supply and demand. So when the authorities, when the government comes and fixes the prices, this harms the free market and it harms the traders and the merchants, which is un-Islamic. So the Prophet, when they complained to him, he said, Allah is the one who sets the prices. Allah al-Musa'ir. Al-Qabid al-Basit. The withholder and the grantor of ample uh, uh, provision. And he is the provider, al-Razzaq. So the Prophet refrained from setting the prices because this is un-Islamic. It's unfair, unjust. It's supply and demand. Don't buy, it will drop. You keep on buying like crazy and nuts, the prices go up. So Allah is the one who withholds. Why? Because of his knowledge. He knows what's best for you. And he's the one who lets uh, or grants ample provision. Why? Because he knows who deserves what. So withholding and granting provision is what is meant by al-qabid al-basit. In, in my fist, this is qabd and this is bast. Bastu al-yad means to open it, to give and to uh, uh, withhold al-qabd is to make a fist and refuse to release what's in it. So if you, want, if you notice, Allah is the giver and the withholder. Allah gives life and takes it away. Allah makes things easy and makes others' life difficult. So this is why you cannot say Allah withholds without mentioning that he also uh, uh, provides uh, um, abundantly. Because both these names complement one another. One without would not uh, do. And this is why it is Allah who withholds souls from returning to their bodies. It is Allah Azza wa Jal who accepts the charity from the rich and he subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for the poor and to the weak. He's the one who contrasts chests and make them tight or expands them and fills them with light from his kindness, from his uh, uh, beauty, and etc. So he, he is the one who sets our hearts and souls free, or he withholds them in his hand, subhanahu azza wa jal. We have a short break, stay tuned, and inshallah, we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today I'm going to talk about the book Interactions of the Greatest Leader. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered that they be respected and appreciated. An example of that is when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited feeding them food that others would not like to eat. Aisha radiallahu anha May Allah be pleased with her, reported that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given a dab, a large type of lizard, as a gift, but he did not eat it. So Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, O Messenger of Allah, should I not feed it to the poor? 
the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded, Do not feed them what yourself do not eat. That is a direct application of the saying of Allah, which means, O you who believed, spend from the good things which you have earned and from that which we have produced for you from the earth, and do not aim toward the defective therefrom, spending from that while you would not take it yourself, except with closed eyes, and know that Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. Reported by Ahmad, Al-Albani ruled it sound, Hassan, in his book, as sahiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Uh, Rashid from Tunis. Rashid from Tunisia. No. Rashid? Sheikh. Rashid or Rashad? Rashid, Rashid. Rashad, yes. Um, if it is not permissible for a river to read the transliteration of the Quran, how can he perform Maqiyam al layl with a thousand ayah? Well, he only memorized a few uh, short surahs in ayat here and there. Jazakallah khair. Oh, jazakum. Uh, Abdul Aziz from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu Sheikh, um, I kind of have um, um, uh, two questions. I mean, it's one question, but the second one is, is, is really quick. It's, you know, something that's very, um, I mean, at least, you know, for the first one, um, I wanted to ask you, Sheikh, what are the wisdoms behind, you know, the Sharia is prescribed uh, death penalty for uh, homosexuality and, and even other sins that are, you know, punished by death too? What? I couldn't hear your so, question. What is the, the wisdom? Uh, behind the Sharia is uh, prescribed a death penalty for, um, for um, homosexuality and even the other sins that are, you, you know, also punished by death. Okay, I will answer, inshallah. Adib from Bangladesh. Okay. Oh, okay, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we have uh, Muhammad from the U.S. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Sheikh, uh, I wanted to know, like, uh, in U.S., in my uh, local masjid, they, they are, like, doing some kind of a conference or youth program or some kind of school district program inside the masjid. Uh, like in there, the non-Muslims are coming and, you know, the women are coming with short dresses. They're uh, walking in the masjid, having conversation. During the start, they're having uh, meals. And also, I saw those scholars, you know, here, Online, they are uh, having uh, conferences or meetings where the sheikhs, male sheikhs are there and also female sheikhs are there. So are those uh, free mixing? Are those permissible? Okay, I will answer inshallah. Kamal from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu Sheikh, a relative of mine is chronically ill. He said he would like to, he would like to write a will to, to half of his wife or in the woman and and then the half for his family, but he's worried that that would not suffice as his wife is just only housewife and all his children are small. Is it this right thing of thinking? Okay, I will answer inshallah. Um, Adib from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, um, so my question is, can I drink water from a bottle? As someone said to me that uh, Prophet Sallallahu forbade it. Um, when I asked him how, he said to me the Prophet forbade um, blowing air in a vessel. So I'm a bit skeptical about what he said. So can you just explain me the hadith where Prophet forbade to um, blow air in a water and... Okay, I will answer you, inshallah. Ismail from Afghanistan. Or uh, Labib, Labib, sorry, Labib from uh, Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Shantullah. Sheikh, uh, as we know that there is a hadith in Sayyid Muslim that uh, the, um, Ali ibn Abi Talib had told 
that uh, to erase all the images, as we all know. Now, the question is here, as far as I know from many of your fatwas, that you say it is permissible to watch cartoon and also play games. So how do you reconcile between them? Okay. Uh, Ismail, no, we have uh, Abu Hafs from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu Sheikh, uh, I have a confusion. I've learned, uh, alhamdulillah, that Laylatul Qadr is one night uh, around the globe. Like, if it is uh, on a Sunday, then it's uh, on a Sunday night on every country. Now, Sheikh, uh, in, in Makkah, it is 21st Ramadan, like the ninth, uh, night of 21st Ramadan. So if it is, uh, suppose it's Laylatul Qadr tonight. But Sheikh, in our country, it is 20th, uh, night of 20th Ramadan. We have not entered the last 10 nights. So Sheikh, will it be the same in case of our country too? I'm confused about this. Inshallah, I will answer you. We have Ismail from Afghanistan. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my question is, Sheikh, that uh, we all know that uh, if someone, if a Muslim commit a commit an act of kufr or say a kufr, uh, his all deeds, good deeds will be wiped out and no, get known. My question is that if he repents and he become Muslim again, uh, does his good deeds uh, from his past uh, come back or you have to start from zero? Okay, I will answer you. Jenna from U.S. Um, hello, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum um, salam. Uh, I have a question about this daily azgar that starts with Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyat fid dunya. This azgar, how many times uh, should I read it? One or three times in the morning and evening? Okay. okay. I will answer inshallah. CD uh, from Germany. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam to Allah. How are you, Sheikh? I'm doing well, alhamdulillah. Um, Sheikh is said that it is mandatory to go to the masjid if we hear the adhan. It but is? If somebody, it is mandatory to go to the masjid if we hear the adhan. Yes. But if someone lives in a non-Muslim country and there's a masjid five minutes away from, from him, but the masjid don't make the adhan outside of, of the masjid, is, he still, is it still mandatory to go to the masjid? Okay, I will answer inshallah. Uh, Abdul Hakim from the U.S.? Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? Or are you going to ask me? I'm, I'm listening to I'm you, Akhi. What's your question? You're on air. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. oh yes, sorry. Yes, the question is, uh, what's the ruling on not reading the Quran regularly, especially during the month of Ramadan? Reading is Quran? Yes. W what about reading the Quran? What's, what's wrong? What's, with, what's the problem with that? I don't understand the question, but I'll try to answer it, inshallah. Uh, Jainal from Belgium. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah sheikh. Assalamu uh, May Allah reward you and that TV and all of us. Uh, I mean. Today my question is about... Uh, it's like a kind of complaint regarding this show. This show is everything is nice, alhamdulillah, but on the Zoom call, some of the brother used to give the answer of some question regarding Islam. But I told them not to give the answer here because it, then everybody will start giving photo, giving photo here. So don't give. And, but, so what do you think about this? Like people giving answer in, in your group, in this, in this Zoom, Zoom call. Okay, I will answer inshallah. Uh, Zahid from the U.S.? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to know um, what is the ruling on the zakat and is it, is, is it um, you have to give the zakat from your money from all year round or is it just what you possess? Jazakallah khan. Uh, what jazak? And Ahmed from the UK. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I think I, I read somewhere that um, the prayer is invalid or the sort of has, has, um, when you recite it's invalid if you don't pronounce the letter from its correct articulation point. But say, for example, I say the letter lamb and it touches the articulation point, but it also touches like a different area of the mouth, like the teeth, for example. 
or if I pronounce bad, and um, how if it touches the teeth, does this invalidate um, the prayer? Okay, I will answer, inshallah. So, um, Rashid from Tunisia, uh, if you say that reading the Quran through the transliteration, so you use the Roman alphabets to write the words like alhamdu, alhamdu, and you write it in English, A-L-H-A-M-U-D-U, for example. This is called transliteration, meaning that it is not written in Arabic alphabets because I'm an Arab, I don't know how to read it. So he says that if you can't read that transliteration, how can a person who's an Arab read 1,000 verses of the Quran during night prayer, etc.? I said it's easy. They don't. <laughs> yani, what do you want us to do? Cut off corners? Bend the rules? Writing the Quran must not be done with other than the Arabic manuscript, the, the Arab, Arabic calligraphy, according to the Uthmani script, not according even to the conventional uh, uh, contemporary Arabic typing. It has to be according to the uh, Uthmani script so that the Quran would be preserved as it was preserved for the past 15 centuries. Those who want to learn our, uh, uh, the Quran, they can hear it by uh, um, listening to it, repeating it frequently, and they would memorize to the best of their ability. Abdul Aziz from the UK says, what's the wisdom behind putting execution, capital punishment, as a punishment for killing others, for uh, spreading corruption in the, in, the, in the earth, for an adulterer caught red-handed, for someone who does the act of homosexuality. This is not my call. This is the law of Allah. And Allah Azza wa Jal, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is not obliged to come and justify everything to us. And this is why we pray Fajr two rakahs, Maghrib three rakahs, and the rest of the prayers are four. And nobody dared to say, why two, not three? Why three, not four? This is how Allah legislated it. So as a Muslim, if you do not surrender your will to Allah and say, we hear and obey, if you do not submit your will to Allah جل, and accept unconditionally whatever Allah tells you, you're not a Muslim. As easy as that. So whether you understand or not, this is not an issue. Do you believe in the Quran to be the final revelation of scripture? Yes or no? Do you believe that there is only one God worthy of being worshipped in this universe and he's the creator and his name is Allah? Yes or no? Do you believe that the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Yes or no? If you manage to say yes, 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 then you have no problem. If you have doubts or you say no to one of these questions, you're a kafir. Adib from Bangladesh, he says, what's the ruling on drinking from a bottle of water. If this is your bottle of water, you can drink from it as you wish. The prohibition is to drink from something that is shared between people while breathing from it or in it. So if you drink from a cup like this and you keep on <sighs> inhaling, exhaling, and God knows, Allah knows what falls inside. Some of the brothers have like big uh, uh, Astakosa uh, lobsters, uh, 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 mustaches that fall inside, and then he gives you the cup and said, uh, uh, join in. With all due respect, what is this? There are things moving inside. So, no, this is what the Prophet prohibited from. But if it's your vessel and you're drinking from it, there's no problem. If it's a common vessel that others would drink, then you may drink from it, but do not breathe inside of it. So, take a sip and you can drink it and breathe, then take another sip without breathing in it, and Allah knows best. Labib says, the Prophet ordered, uh, uh, as per Sahih Imam Muslim in Hadith Abu, Hiy Abu Hayyaj al-Asadi, that Ali ibn Abi Talib told him, shall I send you exactly on what the Prophet had sent me? Not to leave a portrait without um, uh, disimaging it, or, you know, uh, uh, destroying it. So how would that go with us watching 
cartoons. Okay, cartoons are not stills. They're not hang, hung on walls. They're not with me all the time. It's something that I watch and see. Those who created it, those who d drew it, will be punished severely on the Day of Judgment. Those who watch it do not fall under that category, and Allah knows best. Muhammad from the U.S., there are programs in the West, Europe and America, where they have an open day and allow people to come into the masjid. And I've seen some of those on videos, and it's shameful. You see women coming in their shorts or in their uh, uh, blouses with their hair uncovered. Some of them even walk inside the masjid with shoes, and mashallah, the 24-7, uh, 9-11 uh, uh, mashayikh who are ready to give fatwas. So yeah, 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 but well, walking with shoes on carpet is permissible. The Prophet prayed wearing his shoes. And what about the women? Oh, this is for the maslaha, the, 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 the advantage and the, and the betterness of the Muslim's image. So we have to compromise. Akhi, this is not permissible. These are the houses of Allah, and they have to be respected. If women were to come in to ask about Islam, to learn about Islam, they have to be modest, they have to be totally covered, like Muslim women. Otherwise, who cares about them? Let them out. Who needs them to know about Islam? We don't lower the bar, Akhi. We raise the bar, and we raise the people to go up to that bar. It's not the other way around. Islam has a standard. We cannot go below that standard. Sharing platform on a conference or a, a, um, uh, a lecture, like we see in the West, a sheikh is sitting next to a female woman and they're talking and they're giving and they're preaching. This is not related to Islam. No matter how long your beard is, would you allow your sister to sit with another man like this? exposing her face, laughing, cracking jokes. At least her face is visible to everybody. This defies the core of the hijab, the purpose of the hijab. And coming from people of knowledge, or so-called du'at, is even heinous. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. If you're unable to abide by Islam wholeheartedly, Akhi, don't get involved in these devious things, especially when people point fingers at you, saying that you are our own model. You are the one who we learn Islam from. So if you sit with women, then we can sit with women. And if you crack jokes with sisters, we can crack jokes with sisters. And if you go to a nightclub to give da'wah in a discotheque, might as well we should do that. You are a role model. Whatever you do, people would mimic that and imitate it. And you will gain every single sin people caught up with because of you and Allah knows best. Kamil says, a man, very sick, wants to give half of his wealth to his wife. This is totally prohibited. Either you give her now as a gift and register it in her name, providing that you're not on your deathbed. So yes, you're sick, but nobody says you're going to die within the couple of weeks. But if you are sick, that people say, mm, I don't know, I'm counting the minutes. No, even if you write or give a gift, it is not counted because you are on your deathbed. If you're healthy and you want to give your wife all of your wealth while you're alive and register it and go and document it and authorize it, authenticate it, no problem. It's a gift. But... To write a will to be executed after your death, this is an invalid will. Ismail from Afghanistan. If a person committed an act of apostasy, all of his good deeds are erased. True. If he repents and comes back to Islam, will these good deeds be restored? Yes, with the grace of Allah Azza wa Abu Hafs, Laylat al-Qadr. In Mecca, it's on the 21st. In Bangladesh, it's the same night, but it is the 20th. How could that be? Laylat al-Qadr is not, I repeat, it is not limited to odd nights. 21, 23, 25, 27, 29. It can be on the 20th, 22nd, 24th, 26th, 28th. Therefore, 
there is no contradiction. It can be 21st in Saudi and 20th in Bangladesh. Jannah from the U.S., the dua, Allahumma nasalku al-afu al-afiyah fi deeni dunya yumari wa ahli. When to say this, you say it once in the morning and once in the evening. CD for Germany, the masjid is five minutes away. We don't hear the adhan. You don't have to hear the adhan. The distance which a normal person on top of the roof of the masjid, where are no obstacles or concrete buildings or cars or whatever, no obstacles. And he calls the adhan with the loud voice. How much would his voice travel? This is the distance that you should, if you live within the vicinity, to attend the prayer. Five minutes, you must pray in the masjid. Abdul Hakim. So, um, other than Ramadan, can we read the Quran? Yes, Akhi, the Sunnah is to read and complete the Quran once every month, whether Ramadan or other than Ramadan. This is the Sunnah according to the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr. May Allah be pleased with them. But if someone can do that more, good for you. If not, then try your level best to read as much as possible of it, and you will be rewarded for that. In Belgium, uh, for, uh, Jinal says, Um, he's uh, aggravated by some of those who participate on Zoom's chat of this pro program. You know, we receive calls through Zoom. So there is a chat group, and some people ask questions, and some of the viewers volunteer to answer. Achi, we have so many like those on Twitter. People ask me questions, and you get so many people volunteering to answer. And some of them, Jazakumullah khair, they put my YouTube clip, my previous answer, which means that they're students of knowledge, at least my students, so they know my opinion and they correctly answer. But others, they shoot from the hip. What's the ruling? It's haram. And it's not haram. So how would they have this audacity to do these things? These are ignorant imbeciles. Anyone who answers someone else's question without being asked and at injury to uh, uh, insult to injury by answering it wrongly this is a pure imbecile i can't help it what, what can we do and you find them everywhere so yani bear with them inshallah zaid from the us do we have to give zakat from what we earn or from what we possess this is too generic zakat the best scenario is to de dedicate one day on the hijri year let's say one of muharram and every first of Muharram, you calculate on that day, whatever you have in your possession that is zakatable, whether it's gold, jewelry, uh, silver, cash, bonds, whatever you have that is zakatable, merchandise, and you give 2.5%. Ahmed from the UK, he says, if I make a mistake in pronouncing a letter, would that invalidate my Fatiha and my Raka, hence my Salah? This is something that you have to go to an Arab Imam in the masjid and explain to him by reciting it to him. And he would tell you whether this changes the meaning or not, whether you're able to say it or not, and whether this invalidates your prayer or not. This is all the time we have. Until we meet tomorrow, same time, I leave you for Amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ سَيُجْزَوْنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ